What's going on guys? Kenny here from 619 Guitars and Gear and welcome to part five of the Earth Headless Mod Project. Can't believe we're on part five already. This project kind of flew by and uh, it's almost done. I can't wait to actually play this thing. So basically in this video, I'm just gonna walk you through the process of how I went about finishing the body. And uh, what I did is I decided to change how I was gonna do it and I went a really user-friendly route to where anyone could do this. Literally, you have no special equipment involved, no spray guns, no compressors, nothing. Um, just a foam brush and some water-based polyurethane. Uh, so here I am putting a first initial coat of a satin water-based poly. Yeah, people will argue with me saying you're not supposed to do that. Well, I did it. This isn't the first time I've done it and I've got a great result every time. Uh, instead of going out and buying a special sandable sealer, um, I've used this and get the same result. And it's obviously easier for everyone to have access to this stuff. So it's just a satin poly that I'm brushing on with a foam brush just to initially seal the veneer after I stained it. And uh, it had some pretty coarse little holes in the wood grain, some rough spots. So I just wanted to build it up and... and uh, Layer by layer, I put like two or three coats on and then I uh, ended up doing a little bit of sanding. Now, people will argue with me saying that you're not supposed to wet sand water-based poly. And yeah, that's probably too true to a certain extent, but as long as you let it dry and you're not too rough, you will sand right through it if you don't pay attention. So just pay attention to what you're doing and lightly sand and check your work a lot. As long as you check your work, you won't burn through it. And even if you do, you can fix it. So I put a couple coats on, let it dry, and then went right to sanding it and uh, wiped it down, let it dry. And then the next day ended up going back and putting a few more coats on. And like I said, as long as you're careful while sanding, you'll have no problems at all. I've done this before on a few other projects and never had an issue. And like I said, I wanted to do this with stuff that's accessible to anyone. Literally, you can go to any hardware store and get this stuff. So I'm applying it with just a regular old 99 cent foam brush. And like I said, I started off with a satin poly. And then by the end, I moved on to a gloss poly and basically I just kept building up layers and building up layers and I didn't really show every you know putting on every layer because I did quite a few coats so I didn't you know this video would be like 45 minutes long so basically just used the brush filled in as much as I can uh, went back and tried to touch up little spots where some of the pits were a little bit deeper than the others and uh, basically, yeah, that just kept repeating the process, letting it dry, sanding it, letting it dry. And then after that, when there was still some pits left, I ended up just taking some more poly and a credit card and kind of used it as like a, a filler. You can see here in that picture, those are the little pits in the wood grain I was talking about. So I just went ahead and, and kind of just used a credit card to kind of move it along and help fill in the voids. And what it does is where it doesn't need it, it will level it off and then fill the holes with the poly. And, uh, you know, I did that a couple times and it really, really helped actually. Uh, I think if I didn't do that, the, it would have been a, le a lot rougher uh, when I was done than it was. So you can see here, uh, this was after a few more coats of just letting it dry and letting it dry. And while that was drying, I decided to move on to taking the chrome cover off of the pickup. Uh, I was originally going to use a torch and heat up the chrome covers and you can get that rainbow effect, but I decided to go a different route. Um, I decided to just scratch these pickups all together and I'm going to actually be ordering some new Seymour Duncans. I think I'm going to go with uh, the JB SH4, the high output ones, and then maybe the Jazz uh, pickup in the neck. And I'm going to do white because I think white will look really, really good. 
Um, I did a few tests to see how white would look and it looks awesome. So as you can see here, another really cool thing I did is kind of do a mock lumen lay. Now I'm not going to show you exactly how I did it because I want to do that in a separate video, but it came out really, really good. And literally anyone can do this for the price of like $15. It's something you can get on Amazon. But like I said, I'm not going to tell you because I want to save that for a separate video. Uh, so basically now after putting, I would say seven or eight good coats of the poly on, uh, same process I showed you, nothing different, just sanding and applying it with the brush, sanding and applying with the brush. I moved on to hand buffing. Now, yeah, you're supposed to use a machine for this, but again, not everyone has access to that. So I wanted to show you that you can get an almost mirror-like finish shine with just hand buffing. And I started off with using a number seven, uh, I think it was turtle wax rubbing compound and just a lot of elbow grease, just, you know, pretty much doing it and wiping it off and buffing it and wiping it off. And, you know, just kept doing it and kept doing it until you get all those fine scratches out of the finish. And I'll give you a little tip. If you apply your last few coats of poly pretty thick and let it level off, it will level off pretty dang smooth and it will give you a great starting point and then you can let it dry. You want to let it dry a pretty good while, about a week or, or even more. Um, and then you can wet sand it and you can start buffing. Uh, so I wet sanded it lightly just to initially knock down any rough spots and get it get a nice really smooth finish even where those wrinkles were uh you can't you could can still see the wrinkles just because of the different color and the discoloration in the wood but you cannot feel it it's like a piece of glass right over it um so i was really happy with that so i just literally kept moving on and buffing and wiping off and buffing and buffing a lot of elbow grease this was like a few hour process for sure um, but I wanted to do it without a machine so I can show you guys that it's possible and you don't need all that fancy stuff. Uh, then I moved on to a, a kind of a more finer compound. It was, um, I believe it was made by a company called uh, McGuire's. And it was just more of like a, a glaze compound. And uh, that was more of like a liquid. And uh, just the same process, just putting it on, applying it rubbing it in and then wiping it off. And I repeated that about four or five times. I didn't film every time, obviously, but uh, a lot of elbow grease. My hands were really, really tired after this. Um, originally after, before speeding up the, the clips, this was like a 45 minute video, <laughs> but I want, you know, obviously I sped it up so I can show you the process faster. So like I said, I think I put that compound on four or five times and just wiped it off. I tried to get as much as a clear finish, a nice, smooth, shiny surface as possible uh, by just hand buffing it. And I'm really, really happy with the result I got uh, without using a machine. I've used a machine on other projects and yeah, it comes out really good and you get a great shine but I was completely blown away on how good of a shine I got with um, using my hands, honestly. Uh, I will put the names of all the compounds and the waxes I used down in the description. Um, but after I used a compound, I went ahead and applied a nice wax. Now, yeah, you're not supposed to apply wax for like 30 to 60 days. I don't really have 30 to 60 days. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend applying wax for a while, but you know, I let it, the body dry for a long time and I'm confident that I was going to have any problems and, uh, I didn't have any problems. So after uh, using compound, using a wax, and then I used a really nice spray polish. Uh, this thing was looking really, really good. 
And like I said, this is just my way of doing it. You don't have to do it this way. I would recommend waiting a little while to use wax. Um, so if you do it and something happens, you can't yell at me and say, you know, oh, I listened to you and it ruined my project. I've never had a problem, so I went ahead and did it. Uh, you can see here, this was after uh, one run of the process using the couple different grit compounds and then the wax and then the spray wax. And I think I repeated that a few different times. And uh, man, the result was just really, really good for using a foam brush to put it on without using any kind of spray material or any kind of spray gun or compressor or anything. I got a perfect almost glass-like finish. Yeah, there's some spots that aren't, aren't perfect, but as you can see here, I mean, look how good that is. For doing that all by hand and not using any spray equipment, it came out amazing. Uh, so it is possible, and I hope you guys try it for yourself and get a great result just like I did. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. The next video is pretty much we're going to start assembly, and I can't wait to do that. Uh, as always, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys.